taking place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington. Tonight, Chris Weber, blind for 17 years, was severely interrogated by Stephen Cord. He was forced by Stephen's bitterly angry questions to reveal that Anne Howard did not cause his blindness. Now he must face the consequences. Lee! Lee, come out here. I want to talk to you. What are you doing? Uh, where's Lee? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I want Lee. I told you, he's not here. Now, come on inside before the neighbors get a box seat to whatever game you're playing. Why don't you try the bell? It's the only thing that still works around this dump. Where'd he go? White River, looking for a job. That was hours ago. So what's happening? Why'd you try to break the door down? That's a specialty of mine. The grand gesture that falls flat. And they say the best defense is a good offense. Only the opposition ran around my end, all the way to White River. Where have you been? Where I've always been, in the dark. Only it's not as safe a place as it was. Some clown keeps shining a light in on me. Chris, are you all right? You run and run from something. And just when you think you've lost whatever is chasing you, when it's so far behind that you can't see it or hear it or feel it. You turn a corner and there it is, staring at you. Sandy. Right here. It almost feels good to stop. Only I haven't stopped, really, not yet. Why isn't he here? The one time I want him and he's out. I'm worried about him, too. What's he like? What? What's Lee like? You're his brother. You know him better than anybody. When I'm not around, when the two of you are alone. He's mean and tough, you know that. But he can be nice, too. I guess he's just afraid to be nice. Do you love him? Yes, but... I don't know some of the time. Then I'm sorry. For what? What are you sorry for? Chris, where are you going? To wait for Lee. Well, wait in here with me. Keep out of the way, Sandy, but stay close. Why? To pick up the pieces. It wasn't easy. I had to tear it out of him. Which I did. Chris is sure it wasn't you. Stephen, I can't believe it. It'll take a while. I just can't believe it. Seventeen years of nightmares, of, of thinking backwards to that, that one day. Oh, now, now there's a future. For the first time, I have a future. Oh, you don't know what this means to me. But you must. Oh, how can I ever thank you enough? By the way, Chris is worried that you might want to follow up on this, find out who really is guilty. No. I think I know who it is already. But somehow, I, I don't want it confirmed. He's having enough problems with his conscience. I don't have to punish him. He's doing it to himself. You see, I want to be able to, to call Peyton Place my home. I want people to like me. I don't want to point a finger at anybody. 
It's more than enough for me to know that I'm... that I'm free, finally free. I don't want to punish anyone. I, I just want to be happy. Well, it's late. You better get some rest. Oh, I couldn't possibly. I don't think I'll come down for months. I want to tell everybody. Oh, not everybody, just... Someone. Stephen, and you don't have to, to help me go through my father's trunk, because I think I'm not afraid to now. Stephen, do you know how grateful I am? Listen, you tell Betty that um, I'm sorry I kept you out so late, and that she does have the most marvelous husband in the whole world. <laughs> Come on, Ada, it's me. I'm out of cigarettes. I'm closed. Buy a drink. I don't want a drink. Have a heart, Ada. Who's talking? Ever try to pick on someone your own size, Stephen? Not if I can help it. No, you always go after the helpless one. First my Rita, now Chris. Kids who don't know how to fight back. You pin them down with your fancy educated questions and then hit them over the head over and over again till they just give up. You never used to be the kind of kid who pinned live moths to a board. What's the matter with you, Stephen? What's happened to you? You're gonna buy me a drink, Adam, and I'm gonna buy you one. I'm closed. I don't care. It's breaking the law. Ada, I need a drink. What you need is someone about twice as big as you are to beat you up a couple of times. No, you're twice as mean, Ada. You'll do. All right, wait a minute. For my own private stock, help yourself. Thanks, Ada. A scared 17-year-old girl, then a blind boy. Are you training for the heavyweight championship of the world? They'll get over what I did to them, they'll recover. I did what had to be done, Ada. In the line of duty. Right, in the line of duty. Well, it's not so funny when it's your own flesh and blood. Nobody says it was funny. Nobody's laughing. Then what you do it for? Why? Why like that? Because I had to get information. One way or another, I had to have it. Just like with my Rita. Like with your Rita. I tried other ways. He wouldn't talk. But this way, he would. This way, everybody will. And when you've got your talk, you just walk away. The kid doesn't mean anything. You tell yourself he'll get over it, and that's all. Tell me, last time it was for Rodney. What's the big excuse this time? I work for particular people with particular problems. I have to do the best I can for my client. No matter what? No matter what. And no matter who it hurts. I think you enjoy hurting people, Stephen. I think you've got an ugly streak in you. Don't deny it. Okay, I won't. I have an ugly soul. People get to know me, they hate me. They have a right to. She had every right to hate me. If I'd have been her, I'd have walked out too. Betty's left me, Ada. You're kidding. When? A couple of days ago. For good? Most important case I'll ever argue. Lost. Everything I've ever cared about. Lost.
Yes, hi, honey. Hi. Whee. You're exhausted. Had no extra work at the hospital in the emergency. I'm sorry. Hey, what's going on here? And what are you doing here? It's after 2 o'clock in the morning. How'd you get in? Well, um, the bathroom window was unlocked. Yeah, that window's six inches wide. Oh, well, the uh, back door was Ooh. unlocked, too. No more questions. Burger. Now sit down. <laughs> and listen to me. You want me to wriggle my nose? I can make it all go away. Well, will you go with it? Yes, it's a package deal. As the champagne goes, I go too. All right, I give up. No, no, you give up too easily. All right, then tell me what the grand occasion is, the champagne now. Guess. It's your birthday. No. It's my birthday? No. Hmm. I know what it is. I know it's a cheese sandwich I got out of the machine at the hospital. <sighs> cheese sandwiches give me indigestion. And indigestions make for the funniest dreams. None of this is real, not even you, huh? Hey, how dare you call <laughs> me a figment of your indigestion, huh? <laughs> Well, if you are, there's going to be a big run on cheese sandwiches. Mike? I don't care what it is. I like it. Well, listen, wait a second. No, I, no, I wanna, I'm not interested. I want to tell you. I'm not interested. I'm not at fault. Good, 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 yeah. Mike, Chris has admitted to Stephen that he knew that I didn't do it. Don't you see? Chris has said that I didn't push him off the bluff. I'm free. Completely free. One hundred percent free. Lovely. Is that all you have to say? Mm-hmm. Well, would you like it if I went home and uh, you could get some sleep? Yes, please. Well, <laughs> wait a minute. Oh. First, I want you to get that bottle of champagne and pour me a big glass full. Then when you think I can stand it, tell me where you're going to go now that you're free. And when. And what I'm supposed to do when you're gone. Um, what would you do if I said that I wasn't going? Because I'm not. Let's huh? go for a walk. Come on, what? get up, up. Let's go for a walk. Where? Outside, that's where. Let's go. Out. Out.